data in the Ministry of Gender. Uh, the Mount Kenya region ranks highest in uptake of the Women Enterprise Fund and the lowest in loan delinquency. And therefore, uh, when you begin to look at these women in the villages as whatever activity they're, they're taking on as business activities, essentially what you're doing is killing that sector. As Mount Kenya leaders, we're also very aware that this regime would like to kill our small businesses. If you go through the finance bill, once again, if you sell chai and mandazi, those small bibandas that we have in the village, and you only sell 1,300 shillings a day, those are 10, 12 cups of tea and mandazi in the village, you will now be giving, uh, paying to this government about 15,000 shillings a year. So ideally we see a regime that is out to kill our Mount Kenya businesses, that is going for women, I mean in very mundane and desperate things like trying to charge wigs and weaves and very small desperate measures. Most of those businesses that sell those wigs and do those beauty activity are owned and run by women. So as women of Mount Kenya, we are seeing a regime that is out to hurt our businesses, that is out to hurt our activities as women. And therefore, we want to call them out at these very early opportunities to tell them we will not stop to say that, and we will not be intimidated to say that um, for an illegit illegitimate uh, regime, I think uh, you have a lot of guts to do what you're doing. I thank you very much. Governor Derito. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, let me say to you uh, a bit in Kikuyu. You know, he did the Moana. Okay? No, he get the Korea Moana. He had a Yakuga, Moanoji, or Yanaburi. Okay? So, in our region there, the Haina does not eat its own child. But when the Haina is tempted to eat its own child, it begins to say that this child is smelling like a good. There can be no doubt in your minds the reason our young people are being branded mungeke, the reason they are being branded as drunkards is because there is some ill intent on them. And that intention, my colleague uh, uh, Karogo has explained to you, including the little that they earn. So a young person who is doing digital creation that maybe they are making a website for you or they are making up some promotion on TikTok or Instagram or something like this will now be paying withholding tax not at the normal rate of 5% which others pay as professionals but these young people will now if this uh, bill were to be passed will be paying 15% three times what other professionals do it must be clear, certainly to all of us, that young people in Mount Kenya are being targeted very, very specifically, both economically and profiled, so that uh, 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 perhaps uh, uh, extrajudicial killings can now resurface. And we want to say to the entire world, and we hope you as communicators help us to tell the whole world, watch out. Uh, thank you very much. Let me also join my colleagues and the leaders to also emphasize on the point that I have made about the youth in Mount Kenya. And I want to spe particularly speak to those youth that yes, you youth, you are very good. Yes, you said you wake up to go and support a government that you thought was taking you to prosperity. But today, eight months later, you are now being branded all manner of words. That you are not useful to that government cannot be gainsaid. Because it means the government was only using you to get to power. And once they get that power, you then become useless. But I also quickly ask, what is this that they know that they don't need the youth in future? There must be a grand plan 
And that grand plan is plan for their basket of votes as they finish our youth. It is time for us, you youth who belong to this community, to stand up to be counted. Say no to this repressive regime. Secondly, let me speak to the members of parliament. Because I was there and I'm a former member of parliament for Limuru. And I'm known for having taken a motion in parliament when it was first put under camera talking about how our youth were being killed. And I know I received threats then from some people, I don't know whether they were police, saying that I was the next in line. If talking about the youth now will put me next on line, I'm ready. Our members of parliament, speak up for those youth. Our members of parliament, stand by those who voted for you. I had talked yesterday, word yesterday, that they are waiting to be shown the way to vote about the finance bill. And I hasten to add, you decide who among the ones who are telling you to vote for it, yes, and those who on the ground are telling you, Maisha Ngumu, Musipige, yes, to Nyanyasi. Decide who voted for you. Then you can vote the way you'll vote. But Thursday is the defining moment for you, member of parliament, who wants to put a huge baggage on the people who elected you. And all of us who are out here, including those who are electing or who elected the members should take up upon ourselves to deal with them once they pass that bill. Yes, I thank you. The party leader, Ruth, Professor Wajakwa. Baba, Honorable Mata Karua, and other party leaders, for me, I'm going to look at this issue in a very critical way because I've been very much involved in the Mungiki issue. I remember in 1997 when I was practicing law in UK, the issue of Mungiki became very apparent, which informed us to find out what we were going to do with that br brutal regime of President Moy when he wanted to castrate all young Kikuyu males of the ages of 13 and 19. When he suckled them and killed many of them and many of them were thrown in Karura Forest. Many of them were thrown in Gong Forest. In addition to that, and you'll allow me to speak because I have a very strong history with the Mungiki issue as somebody who led the UN to come into this country. At the same time, Moi was vilifying the young Kikuyu male. He also vilified the Kikuyu women, female, young kids. So I called... Um, Koigi Wamwere, who is still alive and who can verify this story, I invited him to come to London with the young Kikuyu, Kikuyu males that had come in running away for asylum, and at that particular time, they had been denied asylum. So we had to lobby Kenneth Baker, who was the prime minister at that particular time. We had also to, lab, uh, to, uh, to lobby Tony Blair and Lord Steele, a great friend of Raila Amolodinga. By that time, he was uh, Steele of the Liberal Democrats. We went ahead and also included the Sto uh, Scottish National Party and also other political parties to look into the issue of thematic assassinations and killings of the Kikuyu male, uh, of the Kikuyu young male and depopulating their women. And this history that we are writing down. As a result of that, we lobbied the United Nations Human Rights Commission, of which they sent our special rapporteur Professor Philip Sons, who came on a fact-finding mission in this country, and then he found out, what he found out was very appalling. He made his report to the United Nations in New York, and then the United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees in Switzerland came up with guidelines on how to treat asylum seekers from this nation, especially of the Kikuyu origin. And that's why we heard for the first time lots of them being given asylum in the UK. I went ahead and joined uh, the then president of Ghana, 
Jerry Rawlings, whom we convinced to ship out some of these Mungiki leaders. As a result of that, many of them were shipped to Mozambique, one of them being Dunge Wariungi, who was shipped, shipped out with a, pass, with a Portuguese passport. You can find that out from him. And because of thematic and systematic killings, our lives were put in danger, save for James Orengo and Mwishimiwa Rail Odinga, who is sitting here, who came in London, made many trips, many trips in London to console with us with those, and with those particular families that they had lost their siblings. I hold the former president accountable for the thematic elimination of the Kikuyu community, something that Gashagwa is now repeating. And let me assure you that we are appealing to the British government not on cameras. I am appealing to the British government not on cameras, but we know what you are going to do. To ban those who are involved from stepping foot in Britain and EU, to ban those who are spearheading these semantic systems and systematic killings of young Kikuyu men and women from setting foot in Britain, in UK, I mean USA. And I can assure you that when I say it, I mean it. And I know what I'm talking about. And with Baba being here, and the other lawyers being here, and other leaders being here, I can assure you for free that we, having been outside the country, knowing the history of what the Kikuyus did for this country, of what the Kikuyus have done in the entire world, of what the Kikuyus have done to open up the economic development of this country, of how much money is brought in this country through Kenyans in the diaspora, many of them who originated from Mungiki, many of them who remained outside, many of them who suffered, and thank God they have settled in the UK, they have settled in the United States, and they are bringing money in the country to improve the economy of this country. Yet some MFs are now taking advantage of political ramifications to kill them. Gachago is just a small man. You may have the barrel of the gun. You may have all the powers. You may have all the police. But when the day of reckon comes, you will be alone. We have seen other leaders who are here before who are used to doing that. Biot being most one of them. Where is Biot today? Dead and buried six feet under the, the grave. What about people like those ones you know from Mount Kenya? When you take power and power corrupts you and you start eliminating people, you start eliminating people, you start cleansing people, you start ethnicization of one community. How do you think Kenyans are feeling about it? How do you think people in Uganda are feeling about it? How do you think the world is looking you at? Kenya was very peaceful until recently when madness came in after stealing the elections. You want us now to come and work with you? Oh, Professor Wajakoya can just be brought. And for those who are being bought, we know them. Time of reckon will come. We are here to appeal to this government to leave minor Jenga alone. Leave Mine and Jenga alone because you are just making a mole out of a mountain. Mine and Jenga has played his role. Mine and Jenga has paid for his whatever. Why would you just take one man, shoot his wives, kill them, shoot at him, and then now you want to disperse those young men? They're hungry. When you see a lion, don't think it is a lion when you can put your finger in its mouth. Gachago has just put his mouth. He has just put his finger in the young men who are hungry, making Kikuyus to fight Kikuyus. How do you think other tribes in this country are feeling like? How do you think the Luos are looking at them? What about the Luyas and the Masais? Oh, Kikuyus are very peaceful people. I have a daughter from that community. I have friends from that community. In the police have been promoted by people from that community. In the last general election, I was financially supported from people, by people from that community. Please give me time. Please. I'm hungry. Give me time because this is something which is going right inside my soul. We cannot allow this. We shall never allow this. And for you who are here, who are related to members of the Kikuyu community, how do you feel when one man who is using taxes belonging to the Kenyan people, who wants to eliminate the entire society, you kill one Kikuyu, ten are born every day. Moi tried that. Kill five, a hundred are born. These are like the Jewish people. You cannot eliminate. Muzungus tried and they failed. Thank you very much. Uh, yeah. I'm sure we will hear from the DAP party leader, Mweshmiwa uh, Waziri Wamarwa. Sante sana. Kabla tujaleta kinarawetu, 
baba aweze kuzungumzia hili jambo wahenga walisema mbio wa mgambo ikilia kuna jambo na leo tumesikia mbio wa mgambo ikilia mlima Kenya kwa hivyo kuna jambo nataka nishukuru sana viongozi wenzangu kutoka mlima Kenya ambao wamezungumza hapa kwetu wanasema ukificha mgonjwa ama ugonjwa utasikia vilio nataka niwashukuru sababu wamekuja kusema kuna shida mlima Kenya and it's not a secret that the Kenya Kwanza regime came to power through a pack of lies and in fact the eight months we have seen of the Kenya Kwanza regime is a boulevard of broken promises and broken dreams by many Kenyans including our brothers and sisters from Mount Kenya region. It's not a secret that this illegitimate regime is losing support of the mountain day by day and they are aware of it. And what they are planning to do, Chinua Achebe once said, when you see a toad jumping in broad daylight, there is something after its life. When you see someone who is supposed to be a president of a country and a symbol of national unity threatening members of parliament, someone who is supposed to be a deputy president threatening members of parliament and literally blackmailing members of parliament that if you do not do this, you will not get roads or you will not get development in your regions. There is something terribly wrong with what Bwana Ruto na Bwana Gashago wamesema jana kutoa vitisho kwa wabunge wetu. But we also know that out there in the mountain because they are where they have lost support they are preparing to use very strong arm tactics and we are talking about a repressive regime that intends to mute the rebellion that is building in the mountain and how will they do that they say you give a dog a bad name and you hang it as they are losing the support of majority of the young people, the border borders, the mamambogas, the threat in the mountain is going to be like the days of Nyayo, the days of Mwa Kenya. All they needed to do is brand you a Mwa Kenya and plant something on you, and you'll be arrested. In the mountain, before open descent is seen, they intend to use the word Mungiki. Brand any young person who might be rebelling against this regime, including the border border, who are feeling the weight of the high cost of petrol. And today they are no longer singing about the hustler who pretended to be one of them and has now abandoned that Mamamboga who was on the headlines today. We want to thank you, the media, for calling out William Ruto and his lies and for exposing the big lie that was using the mamambogas and the border borders and the hustlers to get to power and then forgetting about them. So we want to say this issue of Mungiki is not a Kikuyu issue. It is not a Mount Kenya issue. This is a national issue. It's a Kenyan issue. And we are here to stand in solidarity with the Mount Kenya leadership to say no to the Kenya Kwanza regime and their nefarious scheme of branding the Kikuyu youth Mungiki, of using the Mungiki name to bring repression in the mountain to forestall an open rebellion that is coming. That is what we want to say and wish to now call our leader to come and address the nation on this matter of vital national importance. Your Excellency Raila. Amolo Odinga. Thank you. Today was a day for the leadership from uh, Central Kenya, Mount Kenya region, to address an issue 
of extreme national importance. They say that the more things change, the more they remain the same. I have an occasion to talk about isolation and vilification of the people of the mountain region. And I remember in our days of the youth, during the struggle for independence, the Mama War, there was all the times an announcement in the radio that the Kikuyu, the Meru, Nwa Embu, Nwa Tuatari, Ikuena Moja Kipita, Piga Reporti Kopolis Mara Moja. That was an announcement which was used to be made on the radio all the times to try to isolate the people from Mount Kenya who are fighting for their land which had been grabbed by the colonialists. These were Kenyan patriots who fought and paid a very heavy price for liberation of this country. Now it is so unfortunate that at this time and age, Kenya has now celebrated the 60th year of its independence, that somebody should try to use the very same tactics and methods that were used by the British to try to isolate the youth from this region. There is now an attempt to artificially recreate re-establish Mungiki movement. And I've seen it happen with my own eyes. It's my own Njenga, merely because he accompanied me to the funeral of uh, our matriarch, Mukamu Kimathi, has since been vilified been harassed, they have carried out such as all his residences in uh, um, Nyandarua, in Laikipia, in Nakuru, in Nairobi, planting even some kind of evidence. Some manner they've carried bang, at the times they're carrying uh, guns and so on, to try to vilify him and find an excuse to arrest him, to detain him. The young youth who were themselves incensed by this harassment are now being classified as Mungiki. But you have also seen Mr. Gachagua run around all central province talking about alcoholism among the youth, uh, uh, drugs, and delinquency and urging the chiefs and the police and the administration generally to deal firmly with this youth. Now the youth have nothing else to do. The youth are idle. And that's the reason why they resort to alcoholism. The answer to this is to provide a job for this youth if the youth get something to do meaningfully, they will not be uh, drinking. But they are getting into alcoholism because of lack of anything meaningful to do. You will remember, we had brought a program when we were in government to try to put money into the pocket of this youth. Even the last regime had a program called Kazi Mutani. But Kazimutani actually meaningfully engaged this youth. These people had said that they were going to get this youth engaged in tree planting and so on. They have not done anything. We used to have them cleaning the streets, garbage collection, and, and helping the community generally. And the youth were happy. They were not drinking. 
So, Mr. Gachago, I fully advise you, don't vilify these youths. Give them something meaningful to do. Second, Mr. Gachago, you have been bragging all along that you are the son of Mao Mao. You and your other counterpart called uh, Kimani Chungwa. I want to challenge you today, Mr. Gachagua, to tell Kenyans your relationship. You got to chief Nderi Gachago Wangombe, who was assassinated by the Mau Mau in 1953 because of his collaboration with the brutal colonial regime. That Gachagua came from Madeira. We want you to come clean and tell the Kenyans what is your relationship with that the, that uh, Nderi Gachago Wangombe, the collaborator, so that people can then understand. And tell us also if your father was a Mau Mau, what was his service number in the Mau Mau movement? <laughs> the same thing with Kimani Chungwa. We have said and I just want to underscore what these leaders from the central province have said. They have said that they will not tolerate this, and we want to speak on behalf of other Kenyans, that we are fully in solidarity with the, what they have said. We will stand strongly in solidarity with our people, friends, brothers and sisters from the central province. Central province is very much part and parcel of Kenya. And we will make all the contribution needed to protect these people against harassment by this illegitimate regime. Thank you. Yes. Jina langu ni Joel Chacha kutoka runinga ya K24 TV na hapo kesho vugu vugu la sita sita litakuwa linadamana dhidi ya msaada wa fedha mwaka 2023 finance bill 2023 na kumekuwa na matumaini haswa licha ya azimio kuzungumzia tu swala hili vile vile labda mjitokeze uh, katika streets za hapa Nairobi kuandamana haswa kuzuia finance bill kupita je Msimamo wenu kama azimio ikizingatiwa vile vile ulikuwa umesema hivi leo utatangaza mwelekeo wa uh, wale ambao wana bila shaka fuatilia sera zako labda uweze kueleza haswa mtafanya nini kushinikiza serikali ya Kenya kwanza ambayo mmesema haisiki uh, uh, maoni yoyote ila maandamano peke yake Shukran sana kwanza kabla sijajibu hiyo swali lako ya, ya mambo ya ya ile mswada ya fedha ningependa kukariri kwa mktasari yale ambayo mimi nimesema kwa kimombo ati sisi kama zimio la Kenya tunapinga vikali sana ile njama ya kujaribu ya nyasa vijana wa mkoa wa kati katika taifa letu tumeona njama ikifanywa kujaribu kufanya watu hao ni watu ni wahalifu ati ni mungiki na kadhalika wengine wanashikwa kwa mfano mheshimiwa uh, na uh, maina njenga amefuatwa kila mara kwa mara tangu wakati ile nyingine ambaye yeye mwenyewe aliandamana na mimi kwenda kwa mazishi ya marehemu uh, mkami wa uh, kimathi kila amefuatwa amefanya msako kwa nyumba vyake kule upande wa Nandarua huko upande la Kipia na Kuru na hata hapa Nairobi na ameshikwa mapelekwa kule mahakamani na Kuru baadaye yakaletwa hapa kwa uh, kikao kikuu cha uh, DCI baadaye akarudishwa tena kule mahakamani aki shindikisa na mawakili wetu huko kitu ya ajabu ni kwamba 
yule mahakama alipokuwa anatoa mwezi wake anasema ati bwana inajenga amepigwa marufuku kuongea au kufanya mambo yoyote ambaye hakuna mtu ambaye aliomba yeye juu ya mambo hayo kwa hiyo yeye mwenyewe anaonyesha kwamba kuna mjama na kwa upande mwingine hata mahakama inasurutishwa na hii serikali kufanya uamuzi kinyume na sheria tumesema sisi tutazimama imara nyuma ya wenzetu wa kutoka mkoa wa wakati vile vile nimesema bwana gachagwa amekuwa akijigamba kila mara kwa mara ati yeye ni mtoto wa mao mao yeye na bwana kimani ichungwa nimesema atueleze kinaga ubaga uhusiano wake na yule chief Nderi gachagwa wa ngombe ambaye aliwawa na mao mao mwaka wa tatu kwa sababu yeye mwenyewe alikuwa mshirika wa koloni alikuwa anashiriki kwenye nyasa wa mao mao wakati yule na tukisema kama baba yake alikuwa mao mao atueleze nambari ya ya, ya, ya ya baba yake katika hiyo eh, ni eh, jeshi la la mamao hata bwana kamao ichungwa tutataka kujua uhusiano wenu kama baba yako alikuwa mamao alikuwa anafanya wapi alikuwa shiriki kwa vita wapi katika misitu gani sasa nao sasa kwa mambo ya msoda ya fedha sisi kama azimio tutatoa msimamo wetu kamili siku ya alhamisi siku ya alhamisi tutatoa taarifa yetu kamili tutaeleza wa Kenya kinagobaga lakini wabunge wetu wote tayari wameambiwa wapinge vikali hiyo mswada kama wewe ni mwanaazimio pinga kabisa na wale wabunge ambao wataunga mkono hiyo mswada nataka wale wapigaji kura wao waweke wao kwenye darubini ili wajue kwamba wao ni wasaliti wa wananchi wa Kenya asante sana maybe just a, a quick one just away from the finance bill um, the the worrying now in counties is lack of funds and that the government has not released funds uh, from uh, february some march uh, what do you think of the willingness of this government to support devolution and number two some political parties are complaining not to have received their political parties funds has ODM received the funds and what do you think is going forward in terms of the democracy in supporting the political parties? About the funds, uh, I'm told that there was a meeting today between governors and uh, Mr. Gachagua. Uh, so I, I don't want to, to talk about, but all the times you have condemned the delay by this national government to remit funds to the county government. This government is actually trying to kill devolution. Because if they're saying that they inherited a, 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 an empty copper, you want to ask yourself, up to uh, August last year, there were never any delays. And that regime of Okuru Pinata was also collecting taxes from the people of Kenya. And they were able to pay at least the following month all the dues to the county government. What has happened since that time that we now have these serious problems? I think myself is that there is a deliberate effort to try to take over some of the functions which are being done by the county government. 
but also everybody knows that corruption has shot up very exponentially since this regime came in, in, into power. So we uh, uh, have said ourselves that this regime is not up to what the Kenyans expect. And we are going to tell Kenya what to do. I've been asked whenever I go, Tangaza Mahandaman, Tamaza Mahandaman, we are putting them on notice to Tangaza. Thank you.